Mr. Sane. Oh, shit. <laughs> Can you hear us, Johnny? He can't hear us, thank God. There he is. Can you hear us? This guy is so serious. Yes. He is, eh? He's so cool as well. Check him. Not really. Can you hear us, John? <laughs> I can now. What are you saying, fucker? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boy. How's yeah, it, buddy? You good? Who's your buddy, bro? <laughs> I thought this was like a, this is a roast, eh, right, Gareth? That's all yeah, we totally, to but actually, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we get to Let's do that. <laughs> John, oh, I've, got a massive, I've got a massive surprise for you, bro. I don't want to uh, know. It, <laughs> but keep, oh, it, yeah. keep it in, bud. Keep Thanks. it in. Later. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I wouldn't call it massive either. It's yeah. more surprise. I just want to show you what I've got for you, bro. No, I don't want to see it. Are you What's sure? Up, Karen? Hey, buddy. How are you, man? Sure. Is this a woohoo? Woohoo! Is this, like, is this like a, it's become like a trademark, right? Yeah, you know it, my man. We're going to have like to do it. a team one. <laughs> Yo, what's up, gents? Craig, Craig guys. What's up, Craig? Yes. How's it going, guys? Good in you, my that's, man. That microphone is serious, eh? Yes, yeah, but if you can't hear me, I can get a bit show. closer if you like. <laughs> you look pro. You look pro. I got jokes so early in the morning. I dig it. I know, bro. John, 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 firstly, firstly, John, it's very unprofessional of you to be changing where you're supposed to be. You should have known that people are coming into your house today. What's up, Mubelelo? How are you, brother? <laughs> 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 Umbe is just trying to work out this new thing called a computer. <laughs> yeah. That's sick, man. Oh, oh. Johnny boy. My boy. Yes. John, can so, I show you my surprise now? Can you guys hear me? Your, yeah. your pigskin wallet. <clears throat> ah, ah, sweet. Ah. That's Thank awesome. You. Nicely done, bud. Where, where, where did you steal that from? Uh, yeah, downstairs, yeah, bro. Downstairs. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Pleasure, bro. Fucking awesome. rip off, but anyway. Christ, I can only imagine with the import duties coming to Australia what it's going to cost. Yeah, because I tried, like I told you, John, I tried to get it on Amazon as well, but it wasn't uh, on there yet. Yeah, maybe. Listen, I, I, all, I, all I need to do is come to Australia, Craig, do one or two talks, meet a couple publishers, and then we can start the call, really. Come I just on, haven't let's had, uh, I, I, haven't had, uh, I, haven't, I haven't had two requests, and somehow they haven't worked out, but I'm keen to come down, um, yeah. which I think will happen over a, a period of time. So I just need to yeah, get my figure out. Certainly. There's some cool, oh, yeah. like... There's some forward, there are, believe it or not, some forward thinking uh, like businesses. No no, and stuff. Sure. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure. I'm sure there are. There are everywhere in the world. I mean, there's pockets of it everywhere. So yeah. it's just about clicking into that, right? So yeah, yeah but we'll yes. eventually. We'll it's eventually. a legend. That'll be flipping cool, man. So John, does, doesn't it work? Like, can't you have the Oaks in South Africa send it to Aussie? Is that not how it works when you have a book? You have to have a publisher oh, yeah. in the country. Yeah. They, you know what the thing is? Is a lot of publishers... Um, they've got a lot of local talent and the biggest talent around the world are the guys like the Simon Sinek's of the world. They'd rather prioritize them. Nobody's known. I'm not known. So yeah. for them to put the effort into the book, it takes, you know, it takes a momentum to get there. That's why I want to move to New York so that it becomes an obvious for those territories to take it's me on. But it's South African publisher. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So South African publishers are not seen as sort of, you know, we're not global leaders uh, in that sort of field. Yeah. yeah but so we'll get yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, of course, definitely. Listen, um, I think what we should do is speak to Sean every 45 seconds because he's going to get upset. Because, you know, Sean, <laughs> Sean Roberts' show. So oh, he's going to sleep or go away. It's, uh, it's, it's John plus one today, buddy. I'm a plus one. <laughs> so, at least you know it, bro. At least you know it, Sean. Umlelo, can you hear me? Yeah, buddy. Are no, you good? Can. How are you, buddy? Good. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, can you put Welcome. in some earphones at all, bud? Sorry, man. Um, oh, earphones, eh? Those things. Oh, good. yes. <laughs> you would oh. think he's done a podcast with us before. Yeah, right? this, yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> he's switched on. Where, John, Greg, are, are there any chicks there, boy? Where, bud? <laughs> Sean, shut up. Craig, uh, how's Australia? Yes, bud, it's amazing. It's like, uh, look at me. I'm in a short shirt. Fucking middle of the winter, legend. Wow. 
okay. No, what it's is good, it? eh? Eight o'clock there. How, what time is it? Uh, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, okay. So I just finished... Okay. Uh, I just finished uh, connecting man the physical with man the spiritual, and uh, now I'm here with you, lovely gentlemen. So it's beautiful. What, what, what is that? What do you mean you're doing? I'm that? a chiropractor. Oh, is that what you? Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a chiropractor. I just didn't understand. That's yeah. how you're explaining it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that, that's the vitalistic uh, approach to chiropractic. Not South Africa is full of mechanistic chiropractors. Yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, but it's uh, the, we live in a vitalistic body. It's not mechanistic, so nice. it's just I like uh, that too. Yeah, yeah it just doesn't it's work. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. hundreds. Yeah. Well, holistic holism is is even slightly different to vitalism, in my opinion. But oh wow, um, okay, go on. Educate like, us. Yeah, like vitalism is is we have an innate ability to heal ourselves and and to to our body is self organizing and self healing and. And that innate ability to do that is what we work with. We try and express wow. our body's ability to do that. And that's true vitalistic approach. We, we try to connect this portal in from the, the greater universal intelligence wow. into our bodies. That, that's that's wow. where the, C, the C1, the whole for where the, where the nerves all come down, all yeah. go right into your body. So it <clears throat> allows it all in. That's the like, real vitalistic approach. So you need to get your neck cracked a lot then, just to make sure that flow is right. <laughs> but it, it is cra cracking eggs is different to you, specifically and and gently and scientifically yeah. adjusting yeah. someone's spine. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Very okay. different. Shit. But yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> I had a great day, guys. How are you? How's everyone else? How's everyone else's day? Morning, getting off to a start. Beautiful. It's a good job. Yeah, this guy. Eh? You can't have me and him in the same podcast. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Look at this thing. Like, no, uh, no rude comments. No, this is yeah, professional. Yeah. Act yes, professional. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, are you honest, hey, <laughs> Can't you just put that by the camera, Sean? It'll just be much prettier, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't be a. Sh I think the book is less shiny than his forehead, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a five head, bro, not a four head. Other. <laughs> yeah, just there, man. Uh, classic. <laughs> right, well, cool, there. Are you good, my man? Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Getting there. Give me one second. All right, buddy. Shit. Gareth. Yeah, bud. Are we? Are we gonna? Are you just gonna record this, bud? On on your side, then? Are we gonna still do an audacity ourselves, or? No, it's fine, but we, let's just record it like it is. Yeah, now. yeah, um, perfect, cool, man. Yeah, yeah, and that's then perfect. we'll have everyone's audios and stuff too, and we just yeah. we just use it as a test as well. You know what I mean? Beautiful, yeah, yeah. awesome. Thanks for everyone, guys. Yes, that's legend. Yeah. It sucks yeah. about Facebook Live, though. Yes. Oh no, that's a bit of a bummer. But John, next time, do you want to blow your nose in the microphone? That'll be like a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh yes. Man. Okay, Umbe, what can we help you with, Chana? What's going on? Uh, you can't help me. I need to help myself. Uh, <laughs> but you look fine. I know, you, I know a good self-help book. But I, I don't can, have, I don't have traditional earphones. So they look great. I've got to, <laughs> I've got to get this. Um, can you not hear us, Umbi? Classic Bluetooth going. Okay, I think it's the, I think it's the connection, eh? Oh, you've got Bluetooth <laughs> headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've quickly got to. Cool. There we so go. John, That's... anyway, how, how's how's things going, bud? Like you, um, yeah, up to travel, yeah, doing much traveling at the moment? Uh, no, I've um, I've had a nice break, and I'll tell you why. It's been so beautifully positioned. Uh, while my doggy's passed away, and it's like giving yeah. me the space to mourn him, yeah. which has just been such a beautiful gap in my calendar. Yeah, and in about two weeks' time, I start again. You know, I got the states coming up, I got Canada coming up, I got uh, Singapore coming up. So, I got a lot of travel coming up, but it's this gap that somehow just appeared. Yeah. And I'm uh, yeah. actually very grateful for it. Yeah. I'm also oh, launching, man. launching new website, new logo, new collateral, new book, and so it's giving me that gap to kind of focus on it. But yeah, nearly on the go again. But enjoying being home, yes. eh? I mean, routine is so important. Yes, as, wow. as, as stifling as it is, it's important just to kind of get some structure. But um, yeah. I yearn for <laughs> I yearn for the suitcase uh, travel. Is it yes, okay? Right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you doing? Yeah. Talks? Are you just promoting your book? Is it a mix of things? Uh, both. Uh, uh, interviewing is starting to happen quite a lot more. So instead of doing a talk, some people just want to interview you. So I did that at Gibbs the other night, and. Um, 
So that seems to be kind of popular as well. So yes, talks for corporates, talks for myself, book launches for myself and book launches for publishers, as well as interviews. That's kind of what's happening. Plus I'm doing a deal with Huawei right now so we can start recording all our film, all our videos, everything all on Huawei phones and, and sort of like cool, do a whole man. sponsorship with them. So we're working on that right now as well. <laughs> yes, I, must, I, must cool. look, I must still look into that for you, eh, Johnny. I'll totally yeah, forgot. Thank you. I'm actually, I'm, I'm meeting with a sponsorship specialist this afternoon. So I'm waiting for their email to come back for me and then I'll speak to her and I'll speak to you just to get like uh, a, a, a good, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart, a broader spectrum. Smart, smart back. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. No worries. Okay. Good stuff. Are, right. we Are we ready to go, Umbe? Nakon, oh. you buddy. Go on. Oh, yeah, you man. Can you hear us? Uh, so it's your microphone, bro. <laughs> so guys, just, just briefly, like, um, maybe I missed this at the beginning. Do what is the time frame? I know you guys are all busy. So what, what have we got here? Just so we have some kind of idea of, of, yeah, I've, um, I've got till one o'clock. Uh, so another 50 minutes. I don't know you about yeah. you, John. We, yeah, I'm gonna go by one quarter past one. So yeah, that's cool. Cool. We'll, we'll we'll start sort of like whatever. I mean, let's just see how the chat goes, and we'll just sort of yeah, start yeah. sort of closing it off around about like you know just ten to or just a bit after that. Yeah. Cool. Can cool. You hear me? I'm, I'm just gonna throw up there. Can you hear me? Umbe, are you good, my man? Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah, yeah. good. Very good. Right. I'm gonna get my tea going and uh, fire away. Okay, sweet. Let's yeah, do you it. take your time there, buddy. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about, don't worry about me wasting everyone's time and finding money and all that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you want to you you, you shout a bit more? Yeah, okay. okay. Right. <laughs> Let me use my inside voice. <laughs> Uh, but Umbe, like jokes aside, the 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 audio is is it just me or is it a little bit? No, it's not good. No, yeah, you were better without these. Uh, Umbe, just I'm take out your earphones, but it's cool. Yeah, it's all good. We're not recording that side anyway, so it should yeah, be yeah, fine. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> Can you hear us, Umbe? Yes, there we go. And Umbe, when we talk, uh, okay, you can. I can't hear myself coming through your side that's good i guess we're good to go yep sweet can you hear us umbe no that's a no i wish there was john in this position actually oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, classic oh uh, cool can you hear us umbe or not nod can you hear us bro <laughs> no. um Shit. Do you, uh, your Zoom settings uh, is in the top left. So, he, well, you he can't hear me, so it's pointless um, <laughs> <laughs> explaining. <laughs> uh, it's like it's like when you, you know when you go when you go traveling or something to like a foreign country and like <laughs> the oak knows you don't speak like oh, Russian or whatever it is, and he's yeah. talking to you, and, he's, and you're like, I don't know what you're saying, and he carries on, and you're like. No, I don't know what she's saying. It's just like, <laughs> have you been watching much of the football, uh, Gaza? Yeah, but I've actually watched a fair bit of it, eh? Um, yeah. But yes, is, uh, is it just like international games um, or is it all the time? Because I don't watch much other soccer, but like these oaks are flipping pansies. Like yeah, the diving, diving is embarrassing. But, but the standard in general has been horrific. Bro. This yeah, is the I agree. This is the standard of football I've ever seen on a world stage. Yeah. It's actually embarrassingly bad. Yeah, totally. The only good game I thought or team that played well was Colombia in their last game. That was flipping. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, best, the best game has been Spain, Portugal. That 3 all was amazing. Yeah, was yeah. Good to watch. But I mean, you look at Germany, you look at Spain. Oh, no, it's been embarrassing. Eh? Yes, it's, yeah. Tell uh, me about it. Said that my money is still on Germany. Still, really? Wow. Yeah, I think they're going to surprise everyone. Eh? Yeah, it won't, wouldn't surprise me eh, that last minute flipping free kick and now they'll sure. go and win it. And John, the big soccer fanatic, who's your money on, buddy? <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> uh, me too, John. Yes. I'm so yeah. glad this talk is about football tonight. Yes, I'm stoked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With care. five pros. <laughs> <laughs> My boy. Nothing will be. Yes. I think I'm back in the mix. Eh? Okay, you're back. Yes. Okay, yes. let's rock and roll. We got 45 minutes, boys. So, cool. uh, thank you for joining us on our first Facebook slash non-Facebook live uh, <laughs> chat. Yeah, <laughs> um, 
it's amazing. Like, you know, you, you think you kind of prepared and you know how to use technology and then you actually try to do a Facebook live with more than one person and, and it doesn't work. So, um, <laughs> next, next time we'll be a bit more organized. So thanks for your guys understanding. Um, and yeah, no, we're just super excited to have, uh, you know, four of our previous guests on, sorry, three of our previous guests on. It's, uh, really uh, really great to sort of see you guys again and, and connect like as this group i think it's quite a quite a funky group and you know we, we've got some good banter going on already so that's really cool um yeah so just in terms of like today's chat uh, what this is just like a kind of panel discussion and we just want to sort of like you know chew the fat a little bit about a couple of things and the main thing of today's one the main theme is to speak about John's new book, uh, Magnetize, right? And Magnetize is a, is a sequel to your original one, but eh? <laughs> uh, what's your moonshots? Uh, which is a, which is a, an amazing book. Like, you know, people must definitely go and read it for, for, for many different reasons. And there's Magnetize. There we go. Um, so, so yeah, we just want to like discuss a few of the points in there. I think it's a super interesting conversation in terms of like what's happening in technology and uh, how it's going to kind of disrupt us, but also how to be prepared for it. And then also understanding like history a little bit, you know, like we need to understand history to sort of understand the future, you know, to yeah. prevent the mistakes and those sort of things um, as well. So do you guys just briefly want to give like 30 seconds intro go Sean, John Umbe, and then just, uh, and then we can just kick off the chat. John, you can then give us like a bit of a, overview on the book and we can just go from there what do you mean intro sure. go oh but just like quickly name uh what you what you're doing and oh, okay um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so it's sean roberts here um retired footballer three years ago now back in south africa based in cape town um looking after about 30 to 35 professional footballers both on and off the field and uh, recently started an an online TV channel with regards to footballers' lifestyle outside of football. So that's <coughs> taking some traction, which is great. Awesome. awesome. So exciting, bud. Yeah. Cool. Mr. Sane. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, a speaker, and an author. I live between New York and Cape Town. I speak on the cross-section of <coughs> human psychology and future studies. And I believe that you require both in order to prepare better for the future. Awesome. Yeah, legend. Umbolelo Tinta. So I'm Umbolelo Tinta. I'm an ultra mountain runner um, and, and hugely interested in human behavior and, and everything that goes into that. So um, ultra mountain runner first and I, I'm an event MC and a, a speaker myself. Uh, so it's great to be with you guys again. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Cool. And obviously, you know, like Craig and I are the, the hosts of the podcast. And um, yeah, we're just delighted to have these... Uh, handsome young men on the on the chat with us today <laughs> thank, um, thank you thank you very much thank you. <laughs> yeah and no, i hadn't got to the old men yet handsome. sean i hadn't got to the old <laughs> john, John's still coming, yeah? <laughs> uh, classic so so yeah john just in terms of uh, you know today's chat do you want to just give us a kind of brief <clears throat> overview of uh, what your new book's about and kind of also how it leads on from uh, from your first one Thank you so much. Um, my first book, What's Your Moonshot, was very much around the concept of understanding our individual power in today's world. Um, we have the ability that organizations and governments had in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Today, with the advent of exponential technologies and the internet, we're able to reach billions of people at a fraction of the cost of what it used to cost just, I don't know, 15 years ago. So with this new power, we need to dream bigger, think bigger, big bigger and more courageous questions is what we need to be asking about the future. <clears throat> After I finished that book and just watching my own life around stretching and thinking bigger in my own sort of career, I decided that there was a much more important question. And I just think maybe a, a, a step up from that question is how deliberate, elegant and conscious are our questions about the future? I think we've got into a stage where uh, the first industrial revolution and the second industrial revolution have been incredible for the growth of humankind. What they've done has just been phenomenal as far as education, life expectancy, um, and a whole bunch of different things. But what's happened is that we're starting to ruin the world around us. We're starting to really um, drive behavior around profitability over everything else. And I think it's time we, we start adopting a more mature and more conscious approach into just understanding what business can be used for besides just profitability. How can we build more elegant and more deliberate businesses moving into the future rather than just being focused on quarter, short-term profits only? 
So, so, so John, when you say elegant, what, what is, what, how do you sort of use elegant in that sort of um, framework? So <clears throat> what I feel, and I have a, a chapter in the book about it, I call it the teenage boy syndrome. And it seems like the world is stuck in this teenage boy syndrome. In fact, it was called the horny teenage boy syndrome. And my publisher wouldn't <laughs> let me put horny in. <laughs> but the horny teenage boy syndrome is very much what we are all doing. We are on this constant chase. We are in a constant race. We are in this constant need for more at all costs. And I saw this little meme on Instagram of like a boardroom of men talking around a balance sheet with the whole of the world being destroyed behind them in the window. And they said, you know, Earth is gone, but geez, look, we had some balance sheet that showed profit for a period of time. <clears throat> and it's this idea that we have become stuck in this ridiculous notion of everything but elegance. And elegance for me is about how do we play the long game? How do we see something bigger, broader, more collaborative out there that is just more important than us and our balance sheet? How do we get to a place where we're consciously making money, improving lives, and creating a fair world where suppliers are treated great, consumers are treated great, shareholders are treated great, and the environment and consumers. So there's so many different things that we could be focusing on. Today in the world, we prioritize shareholders over everything. Mm. And that short-termism is killing everything. And so magnetizes mm. is the concept of how do we change ourselves to become better leaders, to be motivated by different motivating factors? How do we redefine success? And how do we build businesses and lives that magnetize towards us rather than us chase? John, it's like, this is, that's massive. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, aha, have you broken it down into chunks at all? Like, you know, okay. Is it on an individual basis or is this like, as a group basis? How, how, what sort of steps have you put in place? Or do you think we need to do well, make? groups, 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 villages, nations, the world are made up of human beings. Human beings are at the core of leadership as well as all these organizations we're talking about. And at the core of our leadership, we have a very clear, opportunity to make decisions based on our primal desires of more or looking for the sort of very clear strategy to try and execute, but very little and very few leaders actually prioritize excitement and a heart-based decision-making process. And when we are able to make decisions from the heart, we're able to build these elegant businesses automatically. The reason we don't trust our hearts is that we have hurts in our memory. We've got memories that that, that make us feel heavy. And then what happens is that our decision-making process is from everywhere but the heart. So in the book, I really talk about how do we unpack our shadows? How do we unpack the psychology that we are carrying that requires us to have more just to feel satisfied? That's broken. There's this endless pit of more that's required that is only really driven by somebody with low self-esteem, with a need for more and for me. This is an immature sort of approach. And so elegance is a very much attached to maturity of our consciousness so we can understand that collaboration is much more powerful in the long run than competition cool yeah uh, what, what do you guys like you, you, you know I'm, I'm sure the shadow is something we've all kind of heard before like like what is you know what have you other guys reckon of the shadow have you heard that term before is it something that's like in the general consciousness a little bit or not, not really for me like what how do you explain it craig I know, I, like, I, I just find it really interesting. I, I'd love to hear what, what all you guys think, because like what I understand is some kind of a Jungian idea of, of um, you know, this having this, this darker side that we don't always necessarily address. But in, in terms of the, a framework in, of making your business in a, a better, healthier, happier place, I, I'm not sure how, the, how that will fit in. And, and maybe you guys will have some sort of input on that one. I mean, John, this book is not just, I mean, is it based around business or are you sort of targeting, right, me, Sean Roberts, as the human, I change myself first before my business is affected? Or is it sort of business, business, business? It's for every single human being to understand the motivating factors of why we need to do business. Yeah. When you're able to feel your heart, business then becomes collaborative and conscious automatically. Mm -hmm. You then stop the chase. You prioritize very different things when you're making decisions from your primal desires or from your heart. So it's a very clear distinction. And I have a chapter in the book that's called, are you running away from the darkness or are you running towards the light? When you're mm. running away from the darkness, you have this dragon that's chasing you. It's in the dark. It's in the shadows. When you start mm. shifting that energy towards building towards something or 
moving towards the light, the difference is very, very important. From the outside, it looks exactly the same. From the inside, one is motivated from anxiousness and one is motivated by excitement. Those two mm. energy sources, one's a shadow, one's a power source. Yeah. And so the most of the world is stuck in anxiousness. It's mm. ch- is stuck in this constant chase. And I'm telling you that on an emotional level, when you switch it, whether mm. you've got a small business or a large organization, the motivating factors change and our approach becomes elegant. Yeah, for sure. I think I did, I did my first talk about a couple of weeks ago and I spoke about um, the importance of disciplining your disappointment. And, you know, if we get disappointed in the past, we become fearful, fearful of the future, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, so that sort of resonates with me big time, John. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And, and from a healthcare perspective, uh, I, it also resonates like when, when someone says you can either look at moving uh, towards health, like modeling a health, or you can move like being scared of sickness. Like we can either study health or we can study sickness and let's try and study health and move towards a positive thing instead of that's kind of from my side, like it, that resonates a lot with that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so John, like for, for me, like I, I used to work in a, you know, like an investment bank and, um, I kind of know like the ins and outs of how that operates. And unfortunately, like that environment, for example, right, which is probably the same with a lot of other corporate environments, it's like really aggressive. Okay. So if I, as a person had to change my approach and just be all really nice and loving and caring about how I approach my work, you get eaten up. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's like this vicious cycle, you know, you almost need, like you need someone at the top and a few people around them to change it. Um, but if it's just little Gareth sitting there, you know, doing his role, he's just going to get eaten up and, and get looked over and all these sort of things. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a big kind of challenge. So sort of that like nice guys finish last, that sort of thing, go. Yeah, kind of, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the, it's, it's, quite, it's quite sad that that's how it works, but um, that, that's just the, the nature so, of the beast. So what you must understand is that when you do heal these parts of yourself, you start realizing that you don't need to be stuck in a machine. You don't need to be stuck in the matrix. There's mm. a whole matrix you can make for yourself. And when you understand the access to power that you get, when you start following your excitement rather than what makes sense or following your excitement rather than what the competition is doing, this level, of, this level of energy that you get access to brings with it creativity, innovation, energy. It's all these new things that start to happen. And I think that a lot of people that are in the corporate world are playing it safe, you know? And I yeah. think that it's a safety mechanism to hold around them. And then what they have to do is give up some of who they are to fit into the culture of that organization. And sometimes it's a fit and sometimes it isn't. But what I'm trying to say to you, Gareth, is that corporate organizations around the world are all set up aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Because what has happened in the past is that the immature masculine, and it's still very prevalent, the immature masculine has been driving the world for the last hundreds and hundreds of years. It's conquer, kill, compete, win over anything else. It's this Wall Street idea that we've always had that's become disgusting. It's mm. become mm. bad taste. It's totally. become ludicrous to drive around in a gold Lamborghini. You're like an idiot. Yeah. yeah. What we've got to understand is that there's a maturing that allows us to even make more money without being so aggressive, being more elegant and more calm. And, and let, me give you, let me give you an example. It's access to power. And this access of power gives us the ability to create, right? Now, if you remember The Last Samurai, who was the most powerful, Tom Cruise or the samurai fighter? I didn't see a Johnny Ryan. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's an excellent movie. It really is. Yeah. And the samurai fighter is calm, steady, seasonal, elegant in his approach. And Tom Cruise gets schooled because Tom Cruise comes with that aggressive American attitude, throw your cots out the, 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 the throw your toys <laughs> out the cot sort of attitude. And then all of a sudden, what you start to realize is that actually the samurai fighter is leaps and bounds ahead of Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise is like a child compared to him. And so what the book is trying to say is that, look, we're stuck in a child's world. We're stuck in this aggressive world. We need to be able to shift ourselves in order to start creating the new world. It's not going to happen by itself. And we need to heal our shadows. You know, things that have been told to us from society, religion, our family that we weren't allowed to show in public, like being horny, being greedy, uh, being wanting money. You know, religion always says, no, no, money is not good. You know, it's like you mm. can't, you're easier to get into heaven than get through a needle's eye than a rich man to get into heaven. Some bullshit. Mm. I hate yeah. that quote. 
because that says, no, no, you know, you must be a martyr and eat sandals. I mean, walk on sandals and eat <laughs> sandals. The whole life to be pure. And I disagree with that totally. Hmm. 100%. And I, I can relate to exactly what you said there about, you know, like the, the corporate world. And then once you get out of it, because I feel like since I've got out of it, like I just have like much more sort of sense of purpose and more creative and like I'm giving back and it just, it's so much better. You know what I mean? And I kind of, you know, I look at my mates and stuff that a lot of them are still in it and, and they're kind of part of this cog in this machine and, and it's mm. difficult to get out of it. And it's a, it's a shame. Uh, that it is so aggressive and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I really wish there was like an easy way to kind of change that whole mindset. Um, it is. You know what it is, Gareth? That's the yeah. point of the book. The way you change it is by absolutely maximizing your self-work. That's all. That's all you can do. But look what's happened to me. It's like I've just maximized for the last 15 years my self-work and my self-development and healing my past and my memories. And look what's happening now is I'm, there's a ripple effect, right? We, we're here yeah. having this call based on my work. Yeah. And so the consciousness that evolves in us, the awakening that happens in us when we do that is all you can do. Yeah. That's actually the only thing you can do. And so that ripple effects around you. So the easiest way to do and to help your friends is to develop yourself even more. Yeah, yeah, cool. And so, so it, it's also difficult because like we, 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 we probably want to change a lot of the people that don't want to be changed, you know, like, and, and they're the ones that often have the influence, say, in these corporate worlds and stuff. Um, so that, I guess that is a challenge as well, isn't it? Well, for me, it's not so much because the yeah. thing is they dissipate out of your life. Once you've done the work, those sort of people don't even, I'm not, they're not even around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My reflection point has changed. My projection point has changed. The type of people that come into my world aren't like that. You know, I don't need to convince anybody. I want people to be excited about what I'm doing and then follow it just because of my action, not because of what I'm saying, what I'm like, just what I'm doing. And that influences them. If I have to go there and convince somebody, I've chosen the wrong yeah. part, the, the wrong argument. I don't want to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. No, so what, what I'm saying is like, if you, um, have somebody that's in this like co corporate environment and looking to get out like, like, like they're looking for a change is, are you saying the only way to do it is just to kind of remove yourself and then go and focus on yourself? Like that's not really a necessarily an option for everybody. Is it? No, don't remove yourself. Just yeah. instead of every weekend getting pissed in the bar, go and check yourself into a shadow workshop. And then one weekend a month, go and do something, go and learn yoga, go and learn meditation, go and, study a Dr. Joe Dispenza weekend away, go and learn, mm. do something. And what that slowly starts doing, it starts unwinding you out of this sort of construct mm. stuck in. Because all of us have coffee Monday to Friday, alcohol Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's like almost just wind up, wind down, wind up, wind down. Yeah. Instead of following the pattern, just follow a different pattern. And slowly but surely your reality starts shifting naturally, like in slow motion around you. Yeah, yeah, no, to totally. I totally know what you're saying. And it almost sounds like you talking about my story in a way there because i just feel that i'm like that i'm re i'm just unwinding now as well you know um so yeah really but interesting you know, just, but just you know just going back to the, the the big machine thing like i it is tough but i i love i do think that it's possible to change yourself within and you and you will probably end up removing yourself on some level when you reach that point like you say when you really become conscious about it but i was listening to a thing recently <laughs> where they were talking about um when when it's just you there needs to be a tipping point if you move out of a thing so for example you, I, you, you might go into a, a, a jail in america and you might not be a racist but you'll go in there and you'll have to identify with the race that you are sort of boxed in with because that's the only way to survive and i suppose a lot of people will feel the same way in any kind of other work environment. They're like, God, oh, I mean, I just have to kind of do this. Even if I've done the self work and I've, and I've come this, this, this long way within myself, are you saying that maybe, I mean, I'm just trying to picture how, how that transition happens within this construct of a, of the machine, so to speak. John, that's for you, bro. So I think I want yeah. for you, bud. I mean, well, I, I think, I, I think, uh, well, I, I, my question, I mean, it could be part of this is that like, I've known you for a long time. And so what sort of happened? And I've read your first book and whatnot. And obviously, um, the business that that sort of failed, if you like, or whatnot, and you've, you've sort of come out of that. But what, 
what was that light switch or was it, was it on one of your plant journeys? Was it, uh, um, what, what was it that said, right, this is it. This, um, I think, I'm, oh, I'm John Sonner. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it was my divorce, to be honest. I, uh, sat in my, I sat in my house and I was just sobbing for months on end. And I realized that I hadn't taken responsibility for my life. And I think a lot of times it happens that you don't even ha are not taking responsibility without even realizing you're not taking responsibility. Mm. You fall into this very silent, calm, victim mindset where you're waiting for everybody to help you on the outside. But really, at the end of it, it's a responsibility that you take to want to go against the grain of what's actually been expected of you. And Gareth, to come back to, to, I mean, Craig, to come back to your thing around the, um, how do you do it inside the cog of the machine or what is that sort of space? You, you know, it's the most incredible thing. When you, when you heal yourself, your perspective changes. And the reason that your perspective changes is that your memories change. And when your memories change, your now changes. And when your now changes, everything changes. So mm. I don't even think you are, they're not even part and parcel of your reality. They dissipate, they disappear away once you've done the work, it's the most incredible, um, I don't know, it's an incredible realization because it happens slowly and eventually you look mm. around and see your whole world's different. You know, your mm, income wow. changed, you're, you're flying, and, and this is, I was going to make this video, but just flying business class has been a dream of mine for many, many years, you know, and, and now it's just happening. I just flying business class is part and parcel <laughs> of what's going on in my life. I'm just that reality click. I don't, it doesn't get wasted on me one time because I, I get there and I'm like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Yeah. Actually sitting on the side of the plane, and this is like it's like a dream come true, you know. And that's just one small yeah. thing, you know. So that's, cool. that's kind of what's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And and so Umbe, you've actually got like a really good story of like how you sort of, I guess, in a way, discovered yourself. Uh, you know, you, or you were going through some issues, and you kind of almost removed yourself from like society and you went and spent three months like um i forgot was it on a farm or something and you went and you're reading lots of lot. philosophy yeah. on yeah, yeah 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 look i mean so it's been it's been quite interesting to hear what uh, john's been saying and what you guys have been speaking about there i'll, I'll come back to to that question what i think is quite interesting in the time we, we're living in right now is um we do live sort of in a time where um, if things don't happen in a decade, it feels like it's never going to happen. And um, for those who are into sort of um, psychoanalysis, which I'm, I'm a big proponent of, and, uh, and I've been sort of uh, really looking into over the last 10, 10 years or so, uh, just through research. So the, um, what we tend to do, and, and, and it's very interesting, you can see it now, particularly in America, because we, we, we get to look uh, through a fishbowl, sort of a fishbowl there is that we want to uh, generally uh, uh, divorce ourselves from the ideology of our times and, and uh, we want to divorce the ideology from the business uh, world. So as we can see right now, we're going through kind of a divorce between finance, which is business, and uh, the, what we revere as the most important thing in the world, which is democracy. So democracy and capitalism are going through a divorce at the moment. And I, I find that very interesting. It's interesting to hear what John is saying about uh, that uh, horny boy syndrome, which um, has led to that. So I, I think one thing that's really important, John, that, or, or, or something I'd like to ask you is um, just, a, I mean, I touched on uh, the synopsis of your book in terms of the consciousness of business and uh, why, whether you think that's important for the future we want to create. So I think it's all about that. It's about how can we create conscious businesses? And Peter Diamande said it best. He said, uh, if you want to, we should all be aiming to become the new billionaires of the world. And the new billionaires of the world are people who help a billion people's lives positively. Mm -hmm. And it's that, you know, you can, you can use business for a very different vehicle. And I think that this vehicle is not about being a martyr. It's not about being poor. It's about being wealthy. But you know, be elegant. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, and I, and I often use this analogy and it's a, it's a, it's a very boy analogy, but if there's, and, and I know we've all been clubbing and there's this, always this one beautiful girl in the nightclub and there's about a hundred guys around her, <laughs> but there's one guy that she loves or she digs and she's watching him. And I'm thinking that, and I'm, what I'm saying is that most businesses are these hundred guys around this one beautiful girl. Be the business that's out there. Be the business that's not always shouting, but just doing its thing in a conscious way. And what happens, you start building super fans for customers and you start attracting the best employees in the world because now you value base. Now you're driving a very different agenda. It's not just profitability. And a lot of companies around the world are upset about their culture. Why can't we get it right? So why aren't customers loyal? Because you're not loyal to customers. You're loyal to your balance sheet, not your yeah. customer. And so it's that shift, you know, and it has to be a conscious shift. 
So Gareth, I I'll just quick... quickly jump in there. Um, yeah. So in, in my journey, something that's uh, become quite crystal clear to me is, uh, and, and I mean, it wasn't necessarily pulling myself away. Life, it was a combination of choice and life force in my hand. But, you know, when, um, since I've gone through the journey, it's been, it's, it's been a while now. So I've had the ability to also act, um, do something wonderful for myself is I've started to access high quality information, right? And it, it's, it's very, very interesting the place we're going to as a society because once again, business tends to try and operate in a vacuum. And I think one thing which is important for every citizen to hear in the world is that if you look through history, we think that we behave outside of the ideology of that time, and we don't. And I think that's something that needs to really be taught at an elementary level. It, it's, it can quite sound esoteric now when you want to try and bring it in, in what is a time of accelerated change. Can you give an example? Can you give an example? I love what you're saying. I can give you an example. I mean, the, the, the easy one and the one that everybody will understand is the Stalin um, uh, Hitler example. Is that was a time of uh, tremendous chaos, right? And nationalism. So the theme of the so sort of the, the, the 20s, um, post-depression, to about the 70s is, an, is, is nationalism, uh, right up to about McCarthyism, right? And in that time, so people like Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Chairman Mao, it, we, we tend to think they're, a, they're an individual who's evil. But actually, they are a product of the current ideology of the time. Now, there are certain factors that go into that. I don't, I don't think we have the time for that. But what we must do, and, and actually, if, you, if we uh, understand history as well, like you were saying, is that if we look back, you know, if you look at the greatest empires of all time, the man who sat next to the, 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 the prince or the king or the, or the general was actually the philosopher. So a lot of people think it was the banker or, or whatever. The philosopher was the closest man and, and he had uh, the ear of uh, the, the bishops in England or, or whoever, because the philosopher is actually, uh, he's, he's uh, touching on the most important aspect, right? And that is our good consciousness. That, 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 that right. is what all the great empires of all time, if you, if you think back and you think of the, that is why the philosophy of um, the last 500 years is still applicable today. Marcus Aurelius and stuff will, it will be uh, um, applicable forever because um, once again, he was tapping into wisdom, whereas now we are purely outcomes based and we're not really asking um, the human question, you know, and the human question is, why are we doing this? You know, so, so I think it's, that's really, really important is let's, um, as a part of John, what you're saying, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading your book, is it is yeah. so vital, guys, that we, we, we kind of spread the information. And some people, if there, there's a myriad of reasons why some people don't have this information. But first and foremost, we are in a time where the, form, uh, the ideology of our time right now can be positive and negative, and that is tolerance. I mean, I have my opinion on, the, on tolerance, but whether people want to accept it or not, Tolerance is an ideology that is dominating now, and we can see it in, in many, many things in positive and negative. But we must be acutely aware that we all behave within an ideological framework. So I just want to say that, and, and, and John, I think you would probably want Very to extrapolate on that. I like, well, I, like, I, like, I, like, I like the language you're using. There's, yeah. one, there's one, I have one disagreement is that you, you said that the, the bishop uh, was the philosopher, but he was also no, the no, richest no, no, man. No, no, so, no, 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 okay. no. <laughs> In fact, the bishops would have a philosopher, but I, I hear what oh, you're okay. saying. No, no, I'm with you. No, no, I'm just kidding. But I, I, jokes aside, though, I actually wanted to find out a, um, a little bit about like this question you brought, you touched on now is, is teaching and education. What are the ways that we talked about the horny teenager? How do we actually start to talk to horny te teenagers in this way so that they don't grow up into dodgy old adults and, and so so what is the what, what how do we change the education uh systems so well i, I think the broader question uh, is before we get to the education system is how do we build um uh success stories around human development first before we get into education and there's a great mm -hmm. saying is um your actions are so loud i can't hear a word you're saying mm -hmm. that's how you help teenagers act it, yeah. be, it cool. be as gandhi's thing be the change because you can tell teenagers whatever you want. If you're acting like a wanker, that's what they're going to grow up yeah. in. And so yeah. setting the example is by far the most important thing we could be doing. And that's really just about becoming human beings rather than educated humans. You know, like there's another yeah, yeah. saying that um, accomplishment doesn't equal purpose. Yeah. 
and the world that we come from prioritizes accomplishment. You know, you're a partner at a law firm, you're, you're a partner at one of the four big consultancies. Wow, that's incredible. Well done. But that's not purpose, dude. Yeah. That's accomplishment. And we need to move towards purpose-led human beings rather than accomplishment-based uh, human beings. Mm. Bulelo, you told me on Saturday, you said, uh, with regards to my footballers, that uh, you know, they're part-time footballers, but full-time humans. And I think that's absolutely. Absolutely. Resonates absolutely. with uh, what John's saying. Yeah, I really, really absolutely. stuck with that. Yeah, absolutely, nice. absolutely, Thanks for yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah. And and, and j- j- just to finish off on that point, I I think you know, um, there's also a, a term which is is pushed aside, which is uh, for me interesting. I mean, nothing is sad. It's all. It's we're all we're always learning. Is um, there's something called the categorical imperative for those who enjoy a little bit of thinking? Is you know, it's it's essentially a fancy way of saying. Um, do to others as you would have uh, done unto yourself. But it was uh, the, the, this categorical imperative <sighs> tends to come after the business model instead of the categorical imperative, which is exactly. just be nice to people. Yeah, yeah. At, at the at the, at the very center. So, and and once again, it, that that is tied to to the ideology. And and once we once we start having ideological conversations, is we, we we can start looking at the framework beyond business as well, because you know bu- businesses behave. Like, like the conditions. I mean, business in America behaves like the American government allows it to behave, you know? But once we as citizens, you know, have this information, we, and this is why educated societies can hold their, um, their governments to higher standards, their businesses to higher standards. This is why drinking water in Finland is cleaner, in Sweden is cleaner, because the people are educated and they're not just yeah. educated in one plus one. They're not, they, they, they actually get the opportunity to think. I mean, there, there, there's certain factors for that. So the categorical imperative is absolutely, it's absolutely everything. And I, I, I'm more on the, philosophical, <laughs> on, 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 the, on the philosophical side of things, but nothing is in a vacuum is, is my point. And, and, and John, it's, it's very interesting to, to hear what you're saying there. Yeah, that's Thank really you. cool. I, I mean, Umbe, I think uh, you're, you're the sort of modern age uh, philosopher, that's for sure. You definitely <laughs> he's, speak very he's wisely. He's saying nothing for the first 15 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> he's just thinking, but he's like, gross, bro. yeah. he's like, I'm going to take this chat right over. And you worry <laughs> about know. that, boys. <laughs> <laughs> the silent killer. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you know what you know, you're know saying about the categorical imperative is, I, I think it's really cool. I, we, were, we were talking about this, Gareth and I were talking about Ram Dass, And he was, you know, he talks about, you just, be, and this is also coming back to what you were saying, John, is like you just become so connected with you, your purpose and who you are that it, like you say, it drowns out the other. So, so when we talk about being nice yeah. and being a good person, in, that, that becomes irrelevant. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's not even about being nice or not nice. It's just be, being, like you said. Yeah. You know, I think the so, biggest favor any of us could do to the world is bring our most powerful versions to the world, the most healed version of ourselves. That ripple affects everything. And you know, when I first started talking about three years ago, I was very much future focused and about 10% psychology focused. I've watched that move to become 80% psychology, 20% the future. I think in the future, I'll only speak even 10% about the future because once you get your psychology right and once you get the emotional state right, being triggered, the future becomes obvious. It's just, you know, I don't have to tell you about the future. You'll figure it out yeah. for yourself. You just yeah. need so, to get the end. Do you mean like coming back to being more present? Is that what you mean? It, it, that state of, yeah. um, you know, I, I heard this great saying, <laughs> they said, wisdom is having memories with no triggers. So when you're wow. able to be soft about the past, then you're able to be wow. forgiving. You all of a sudden lay, release this level of energy that comes into your now and that just whoa, just permeates. It's like the most easy, free-flowing, supernatural sort of thing when you've shifted that stuff in the back. Wow. And then the future for you categorizing it, finding it, deciding what you want to do becomes obvious. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the things, like just listening to, to everything that you guys have just said, um, one of the things that that's Craig and I find, you know, which is so important for everyone to realize is that uh, you, you don't actually ever know who's watching or, or the fact if there's so many people watching you, you know, and like, even though it doesn't feel like you may be making an impact, you mm. are because a lot of the people are watching. They just silence. They don't actually let you know. But then once in a while you have like a, a random oak you haven't seen in like 10 years. He goes, yeah, he's like, been watching your stuff for like the last six months. And it's really mm. got me thinking and stuff, you know, and that's really, really important to remember, you know, and, and, 
by being a genuine good person talking about it, um, et cetera, you are going to be able to make a positive change, which is, you know, what you're kind of uh, leading towards. Hey, John. So the, the thing for me is, is that, you know, when you're forgiving yourself and when you're forgiving your past, what happens is you start seeing the best version of yourself. You start allowing the best version of yourself to start coming to the forefront. And this best version of yourself is just you with a healed past. That's what a best version of yourself <laughs> is. And now when you come into the space, all you can do is automatically see the best in other people. And so then people mm. say, wow, it's so inspiring being with you. Yeah. And being inspiring being with you just means that you see the potentiality in me before I've seen it because you see the potentiality in yourself. Definitely. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. John, I might be going slightly off topic here, but you know, I only really started forgiving myself this time last year, and that was through a, a plant journey that I went on. Do you find that? Um, do you find that space a massive, massive shift in you? If that makes sense, did that play a major role in your um, growing success? So I think you know, teacher plants. If you look at the history of teacher plants and what they've done for humanity, and you watch that Graham Hancock talk, War and yeah. Consciousness. He tracks it all the way back to Egyptian times, how plants help them evolve. Bushmen, how plants help them evolve. And so if you look at history, we just have a lot of plants involved in our awakening. I'm, by no, I'm exactly the same. The awakening that the plants have given me has been able to rewire my subconscious in such a fast way that it's given me the ability to heal and reassess my past. So absolutely, teacher plants, without a doubt. You know, I was at Gibbs. I was being interviewed about my new book. It was a 90-minute <laughs> You, 25 minutes was about ayahuasca. Just yeah. people wouldn't stop asking about it. And you know, uh, ridiculously human guys, I get messages still on Instagram. Please can you introduce us to a shaman for ayahuasca, please? Or like, like still, like people are so infused by so it. So cool. yes, plants, plants are by far, far, far the biggest catalyst I've had. And I imagine anybody who's, who's actually engaged with them. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. before we move on from that topic, um, well, uh, with healing, we talked about healing ourselves and our past and our and confronting our shadow, what are the other tools that you guys, I mean, everybody here as a panel, like what are the tools, meditation I can think of, ayahuasca, what are some of the other things that you guys use to try and grow yourselves and to heal yourselves from potentially old, old stuff? I think for me, I mean, definitely the plant medicine. Um, yoga has completely changed my life. Cool. And probably the biggest thing is communication. Hey, eh? I mean, mm. if, if just if you communicate with your wife or your friend or your loved ones, and you tell them, right, guys, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. Instead of letting it yeah. sit and ferment and expect yeah. them to know what you're thinking, um, that's why me and Stace are the most unbelievable relationship now because we're best friends again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm oh, married cool, to my man. best friend. So, and that's through communication. And, uh, yeah, so I think that's probably my top three, to be honest. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I totally, I was going to say, like, communication was actually going to be my number one, like, and, and on different instances, like, definitely being honest with your partner, you know what I mean? And, like, just say what you mean and, and, and let them know, you know what I mean? And, and also so that it doesn't manifest within itself, yourself, so that yeah. you're an evil person. But yeah. also, I think the other good one, Craig, is, like, is it's not, it's not just a personal thing, but like having conversations like this, right. In a group, which is like Oaks that are uh, willing and able to understand other people's perspectives and have a mature conversation about this. That is important. That is important for other people to see, you know what I mean? And, and because that helps spread the word and like gets other people thinking, Oh yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm a bit like this or I act like this at work or whatever. And, and maybe I do need to shift if, if these type of guys are doing it and talking about it. Absolutely. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hello you any, uh, yeah. So, so, um, I mean, I've got, I've got probably two things to, um, to say on that, John, just to touch on what you were saying, which I thought was a great point was, I think once we do um, expose people to, I think magnetize is going to be something special from this not subred is, you, you know, when people engage with something like that is we start to actually realize there it is, is that um, the future uh, and, and you, you know, I used to think this was a throwaway until I, I actually started applying it to my own life. And I, I'll come back to, the, to, to how I've done that is that the future isn't actually a, a place we're going to. It really is a place we're creating. 
and I, I know that it, it, when we talk about it on a broad scale, that probably sounds scary. When you take it to an individual scale, you can, and you actually just apply it even to what are, next week. Uh, and you say, if I do something positive this week, by next week, Wednesday, just watch how, whether it's how you feel or, the, or, or you actually, actually see a change. You're, we are literally creating that future. On a broad scale, difficult to think of. On the individual scale, that's not that difficult uh, to think of. And in terms, and in terms of how that, that's, um, that's sort of helped me, I think, you know, uh, I'm more of a, of all of us, probably the, 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 the biggest pessimist because I hide in my, in my philosophy and books and things like that. But for me, where I've, I've really found sort of solace and, and um, you know, a beautiful thing is that actually, you know, the idiosyncratic nature of man means we'll never actually, you'll never actually know yourself. But the beauty of being human is that you can do other stuff, you know, you can talk to people, you know, and if you want to be understood, and here's the beauty for me, and this is probably where the torture for somebody like myself, who's, believe it or not, rather introverted is, if you want to be understood, and this is something which uh, the, the, that horny boy syndrome in the past, we, we, we uh, particularly men, we've never, we've never done this, is if you want to be understood, you must explain yourself. And businesses mm, don't, exactly. if you want to be understood, you must explain yourself. So I think I found freedom in, in, in reading that, you know what, you're never actually going to know yourself. Some days you're going to be miserable. That's fine. That's part of being human. But everybody can only see the shell. You know, I'm, I'm in a trap. If we want to be understood and do great things and magnetize, and I, I think it's such a great term. I know I've said it a lot. Mm. Uh, by the way, John's not paying me to plug his book. I, I, just, <laughs> I, 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 do, I love the sentiment behind the name is, you know, the one of the what allowed uh, mankind to escape from uh, the, the animal kingdom is opposable thumbs and the ability to speak. Mm. You know that is language. such a, a, a marvelous language. Thing. Yeah, that's that's what. Yeah, yeah. The ability to harness ago. good language. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think so. From 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 me, it's that ability to um, tell people how I feel is actually a meditation for me. And and without it being somebody who's being paid to listen, is I go inwards. And, you know, once, I, once we've done, you can use the language you like, worked on it or, or whatever, and being okay with being human, which is not perfect, and then telling people how you feel mm. often. That's been a meditation for me. And it's been a, for me, a being a really introverted, self, uh, sort of self-centered human being, to, to, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in sort of an evolution. And it's, it's been a wonderful meditation for me. You know, that, that, so that's been my tool, is going inwards and then telling people how I feel m more often. Yeah, nice. powerful yeah. stuff, man. I like it what a lot. Do you, mean, do you mean possibly making yourself more vulnerable? Is, is, is that what you mean as well? Putting I, yourself I think, in vulnerable states, or you, you, you know, I think vulnerability disappears. Or, or, I'm speaking to, to my experience. I'm not speaking for everybody. For me, vulnerability um, disappears when I've accepted that I'm not going to be perfect in anything. So I've accepted my um, imperfection anyway. So when I'm, when I'm speaking to people, it's, um, I don't feel vulnerable because this is all I am. This is, this is all I am. So I, I, I personally don't like vulnerable when I'm talking about myself because I'm going to tell you what I am. So if that, if that means being vulnerable, then yes, Sean, I, I think that is what I'm saying. But I don't see it as vulnerability. It's, you know, I accept myself as I am, not how I want to be, you know? Sure. Which is a bit oh, cynical, but, but, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, That's right Nietzsche coming out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, boys, like, look, in the, in the interest of time, this has been a, an amazing chat. Thank you so much, man, yeah. like, mm -hmm. for coming and, and being sort of our first guest on it. It's really, really cool. It's just like, just like four, five oaks <laughs> having a cool chat about like, some cool subjects. And it's, uh, you know, it's been really deep. Counting? Yeah, no, I don't know I what's don't know. going on, but you, this is why I had to leave the bank. It's, 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 it's four guys and John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, one thing, one thing. Yeah, one thing. yeah one please. One of the things that we must take into account is coaching and the power of coaching and to surround ourselves with coaches that are able to give us an objective point of view and investing in the invisible possibility of your best self. That's what a coaching is. And so when we go into coaching sessions, we think, why am I paying three grand an hour? I don't even know what I'm getting out of this. Mm. Dude, after a while, what you start seeing is a very different evolutionized version of yourself that those coaching sessions just take on a very magical sort of golden thread throughout your life. So for me, the, 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 the two things that I want to add to all of those things is one, 
take responsibility for your reality and become action orientated at every moment of every day. Because if you don't yes, take sir. that responsibility, you don't take the actions and then you fall back into old ways of thinking. And yeah. secondly, get a coach, get two, get three, get five, get as many as you need. I've got between two and four, depending on what's going on in my life. And I tell you, every time I come out of one of those sessions, I'm a new human being. I've shifted just a slightly, just a slightly. And you know what it is, is like moment by moment decisions end up making us a star or re- irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, John, sorry, I just want to cut in there before you, uh, you let us go. Where, where can guys get your, get your book? Obviously, we're in South Africa. And then where can guys get your book online? I mean, if I live in Indonesia, how do I, how do I grab the thing? So Amazon uh, will have it by the end of next week. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Amazon, if you get online and look me up, uh, we can definitely ship one to you. It's a little bit costly, but we can do it if you want one. Kindle, you'll be able to download it by the end of next week. So when I said Amazon, I mean the hard copy can be delivered to you. And uh, the Kindle one, you can also download it by next week. And I start recording Audible tomorrow. So if you like me and you like awesome. to listen to these things, in a couple of weeks time, the Audible will be ready as well. Thank and you it's, so much. Oh. it's an investment. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. always an investment. It's always yeah. an investment. Uh, you, you know what? I think what, what, you know, the, if you have that one degree difference now, and that what makes that one degree? It's like reading a book, like Magnetize, or having this conversation and being invested in it. That one degree now in the future is like Massive. a thousand degrees, you whatever, you know, like it, it yeah. changes. And, and so, like, all like you said, the coaching session is another one degree, the book is another one degree, these open discussions. So, I think it's a real positive message. It's great. Yeah, thank, I, I, it's a moment by moment process, it's not a once off decision, it's a moment yeah. by moment. moment. And every single second, you've got the choice. Do I go pessimistic? Do I go optimistic? Do I look at the future with excited eyes or am I upset about it? Do I feel great about going to New York or am I shitting myself? I've got to keep reminding myself I'm excited, not yeah. nervous. And trust yeah, yeah. me, it's a very fine line. I've got to keep reminding I'm excited, <laughs> not nervous. I'm excited, not nervous. <laughs> That's that true, is right. exciting though. Yes. <laughs> cool, man. Cool. Boys, Thanks, awesome guys, chatting everybody. to you. Thanks so much. Eh? And does anyone have any issues if we post this online? Is there anything you don't want to be on there or anything? My face. <laughs> just ask John yeah, again. Yeah, I, just, that. <laughs> I think it was too many close-ups of John, to be honest. <laughs> uh, classic. All right, guys, boys. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, it was a really See you later. Thanks, John. Well, I'm Belenlo. Thanks, guys. See you later. Speak to you soon, man. Cheers, Cheers, buddy. Guys. Thank bye, you. Bye. 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 bye.